Section 2.8, uh, we're going to start talking about absolute value equations and also absolute value inequalities. Now, um, before we even get into the absolute value side of things, we're just going to talk a little bit about the different types of inequalities that you can have. Um, so again, objectives. Um, we're going to solve the compound inequalities first, and then we're going to talk about how those play a part in solving absolute value um, in equations or inequalities and equations. All right, now it wouldn't hurt again, like I talked about before, to maybe go through and write down some notes, some important things as you go through this, so that way you don't have to always refer back to the video every single time that you have a question. Now, again, I made the the notes and additional examples for this available to you as well. But again, taking some notes on your own is only going to help you remember the information uh, better as we move forward through this. All right, so some key terms, uh, disjun disjunction, conjunction, and obviously then an absolute value. And we'll start talking about disjunctions and conjunctions right away here from the top. Okay, now basically disjunctions and conjunctions are specific types of absolute values or absolute value equations. All right. Now, this case up here, you have what is called the disjunction, or essentially what's happening is you are looking at values or solutions to your equations that move outside. Okay. Or basically, what happens is you have a gap that happens to be in your solution set. Okay. In this case, Anything that would be less than or equal to negative 3 would fulfill your inequality. And on this side over here, anything that is greater than 2 would fill your inequality. Now, there's two different types of notations down here at the bottom. Uh, I'm really only concerned about if you know how this one works. Um, the one below it, set builder notation, that is just another notation that some books will use for how they represent their solution sets. You should make note of what this is right here, that U. What that means is uh, refers to the union of those two solution sets. Okay, union, I can write it down for you. And what that means is if you look at the inequality that's up here, we have essentially two separate inequalities, but both of them together represent my solution set. So I have the union of X is less than or equal to negative 3 and the union of, uh, or its union or combined with, x is greater than 2. Okay, now a disjunction is true if and only if at least one of its parts is true. So the whole idea is, if I have a solution that fits this side of my inequality, it works for the whole thing. Okay, if it only fits this side, that's okay. It only has to fit one of the two. It doesn't have to work for both the x being less than or equal to negative 3, or the x being greater than 2. Okay, that's the whole idea of the or. Works for one or the other. All right, now conjunction takes that same idea, but as you can see up here, where I have my solution set represented, all right, we are looking at solutions only between negative 3 and up to positive 2. Down here, a conjunction is represented with an and as opposed to the disjunction that was represented with an or. All right. And just means that it has to be between these two or it has to work for both of the inequalities that you come up with. In other words, my solution in this case would have to be greater than negative 3, but it would also have to be less than positive 2. So you can see how our solution set is a little bit more limited when we have a conjunction. Down here, this little upside down n um, represents, it's the same idea as the union that we talked about before, except for this represents the intersection. And what intersection means is that basically, like we, I already talked about, it has to work or fulfill both parts of your inequality. All right. Again, I'm just mostly concerned about do you understand how this inequality notation with the AND or with the OR happens to work or what it means. Okay, again, just some notes, some stuff that would come straight out of the textbook here. 
dis, um, the whole prefix there means a part, meaning that disjunctions have two separate pieces. And again, remember, it only has to work for one of those two pieces. Conjunction or con, the prefix here, all right, means together. All right, the whole idea of a conjunction means that it has to fulfill both parts of your inequality. Okay, so we're just going to start solving these to begin with. Obviously, this is a disjunction because it has an or between it. You don't really have to worry about that so much right away. What you're going to do is you're just going to take each individual inequality and you're going to solve them. So it's going to look like you get two answers. And then we're just going to put or between it when we're done. So if I start on the left here, to solve for x, I would have to add 5 to both sides. So x is going to be less than, uh, in this case, it looks like 17. And then over here to solve for x, I would divide both sides by 6. So x is going to be less than or equal to 2. All right, now again, it started out as a disjunction, so that means I have to have an or between them. Now if you're not 100% sure what the ors or what the ands are supposed to mean, your equation or your solution sets, I should say, over here and over here will get you to the correct shading if you understand how that's supposed to work. You probably need to get to the point where you understand that an or means we're going to more or less have a gap in the middle of our graph and our arrows are going to go away from the center. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the 2 and the 17 all right, that are parts of my solution. So this says x is less than or equal to 2. Okay, so I'm going to find 2 on my graph, which would be over here. All right, less than or equal to means closed circle. Okay, so what that means is less than or equal to that, I would shade going this way. All right, now this other one here says x is less than 17. Now, right off the bat, 17 would be in here somewhere. Now, less than 17, all right, technically I should have put an open circle there. Sorry about that. Open circle right there. Okay, now it's, this one's also saying less than. So it is possible to have a disjunction that has shading that goes in the same direction. More times than not, what's going to happen is one of your solution sets is going to be a greater than. So in that case, we would have had an open circle and we would have shaded this way. And you could have seen the gap or something in our graph. Now it doesn't have to work that way. What this is saying up here is that as long as x is less than or equal to 12, or excuse me, less than or equal to 2, or less than 17, it will work for this particular equation. All right, probably not the best example to start off with. It would have worked a little bit better had this been a greater than sign to begin with, so you could have actually seen what the gap in your graph is going to look like. But again, the whole idea of the or is that the inequality or your solutions at the end only have to satisfy one part of the inequality. So if I'm looking at my solution set, obviously if I pick something that's in this region, like a 1 or even a 0, that would satisfy this part of the equation. On the other side of things, if I picked an answer, say like 12, solution like 12, 12 still will work because it fulfills this side of the inequality. It doesn't work for this one, but it does work for this one, and that's all that we need is it to work for one of the two. Okay, then we have an and inequality or a conjunction. Same idea. I'm going to solve this, solve each separate part, um, and then kind of put them together at the end. Now you have to remember in this case, dividing by negative 3 means that I'm going to have to switch the order of my inequality so it becomes a greater than sign. And on this side, subtract 4. So x is going to be less than or equal to um, 8. Okay, so I get my two answers. Again, and typically means that I'm going to shade between my two dots. Now like I just showed on the last one, it doesn't always necessarily work out that way for you. And again, the signs that you have here and here should take you to where the shading is supposed to be anyway, even if you don't remember what and and or is supposed to mean. Okay, so x is greater than 4, so I would find 4 right here, and x is less than or equal to 8. 
would be right here. Now this one is going to work out a little more typical to what a conjunction should look like. The and in the middle means it has to work for both of them while over here this is telling me I have to be greater than 4 meaning I would have to shade this way. And remember I can't go past this because it would have to work for both of them because it's an and. And here it says less than or equal to 8 so I would be shading this way. All right, And again we don't want to go past this 4 over here because it has to work for both or it has to fulfill both inequalities. So my answer has to be greater than 4 and it also has to be less than or equal to 8. So as you can see in here I'm limited by what types of answers that I can actually get. Alright now the reason that we talk about the inequalities and stuff like that right away is because as we work towards uh, absolute value uh, inequalities we eventually transform them into conjunctions and disjunctions and an absolute value problem essentially turns into a compound inequality. All right, now absolute value, remember, is the distance from zero. Uh, so, for example, down here, the absolute value of five and negative five are going to yield the same answer. They are both a distance of five away from zero. Okay, so um, that was just kind of a quick review of how that's going to work. Again, if your absolute value is a specific number, like an equal to, uh, which we're not going to deal with a whole lot today, but we kind of review the whole idea of what's going on there so we get the general idea. Say you have something like the absolute value of x equals 3. All right, well, we know specifically that there can only be two answers to this, negative 3 and positive 3, right, because those happen to be 1, 2, 3, or 1, to three units away from zero. All right, so that's pretty cut and dry. All right, two answers if you have an equal two part with that, because we're talking about distance away from zero. Now we start throwing inequalities in here. Okay, before we said that three and negative three would have been my solutions if I had an equal to absolute value of x is equal to three. In this case. We want any distance, okay, the absolute value is less than 3. So any distance from 0 that is less than 3. So you can see how this looks very similar to what a conjunction would look like in the fact that all of my answers or all of my absolute values that would be less than 3 would fall in between 3 and negative 3. All right. So essentially what's going to happen is when we have a absolute value inequality that starts out as a less than, we're going to use the whole idea of a conjunction to solve that. On the other hand, if we think about wanting absolute values that are greater than 3, we still have the same starting points, or I guess you could say kind of ending points uh, to begin with here. But instead of going inside where the value, absolute values would be less than 3, we would be looking at anything that is outside of those 3 and negative 3. All right? And this looks very similar to what a disjunction would look like or an or compound inequality. All right? So basically what this is leading to is when we get to the point where we have uh, absolute value inequalities that have greater than signs in them, we're going to set those up like disjunctions. Okay, now this is just kind of another one of those things to kind of help you remember. Um, it, essentially, if you have an absolute value inequality that has a greater than or a greater than or equal to sign, you're going to use an or inequality to solve that. Okay, if you have a less than inequality that has an absolute value in it, you're going to use a com, uh, excuse me, a conjunction or that type of compound inequality to go ahead and solve that. So this just kind of gives you the idea of how this is going to be set up. We had talked about absolute value equations at the beginning of the year where you set it up as two separate equations. You have to take into account a positive value and also the negative value that could reflect the absolute value you're looking for. It works the same way for less than inequalities and greater than inequalities. All right? One of the problems when you do um, conjunctions here is you basically take what's written for you, drop the absolute value sign, and write it as is. 
The other one would be you have to take into account the negative aspect of what's going on. So we take and we flip our sign and we make the other side of it negative or essentially you multiply by a negative one. Same thing happens over here. What you are given without the absolute value signs is what you would start with over here and then you take the negative aspect of what's going on, flip your sign around, all right, and you solve that one. So we're going to turn these absolute value inequalities just into compound inequalities. All right, now this is just an example of an actual equation. All right, so I would just go ahead and take this and set it up as two separate problems. Essentially, I have what's given to me without the absolute value signs, and then I have to take into account the negative aspect of what could also give me um, a negative distance from zero that still has the same absolute value. Okay, so to solve these, I subtract 9, I subtract 9. So one of my answers is going to be 4. On the other side of things, if I subtract 9, x is going to be negative 22. All right, so those would be the two numbers that would give me a distance of 0 that equals 13. Okay, in this case, the 4 is pretty easy to see. You fill 4 in here, you'll get 13. The absolute value of 13 is 13. If I fill a negative 22 in here, I will end up with a negative 13. And the absolute value of negative 13 also gives me 13. Okay, so solving the um, absolute value equations, you basically just have to set it up to equal to what's given to you or uh, you have to flip the sign a little bit there. All right, now um, here's another example of an equation. Uh, the one thing you just have to keep in mind as you go through this is you have to make sure that um, you get the absolute value by itself before you happen to solve it. So in this case, I need to add the 8 over the other side first. So then I get something that looks like this. All right, now I can set it up as two separate problems, but you can't do that until you get the absolute value portion of your problem by itself. So now I can look at this as 6x equals 30, or I can look at it as 6x equals negative 30. All right, in this case, divide by 6, and I can even divide by 6 on the other one at the same time. x is going to equal 5, or x is going to equal negative 5. All right, two answers to an absolute value equation. Okay, now we're going to get to the inequality part. Um, I kind of talked about some of this stuff already down here as far as the one, two, and three steps that are listed down here. Okay, the first thing and the most important thing is right here. Isolate the absolute value expression or the absolute value portion of your inequality. Okay, you cannot rewrite it as a compound inequality until you get the absolute value part by itself. Okay? So, if we look at something like this, all right? First thing we'd want to notice is, well, the absolute value part is by itself. So, we're good on that end. The other thing I want to recognize is the fact that this is a greater than. All right? So, that means that I will have an or inequality or a disjunction. So I'm going to rewrite this in two ways. First one, I'm basically going to take what's written there for me. 4Q plus 2 is greater than or equal to 10. Basically, the same as I had written up there, I just dropped the absolute value signs. Okay? Or, and again, we use the or because of the greater than sign. I'm going to write negative 4Q plus 2, but I'm going to go less than or equal to negative 10. Okay? Or basically... I changed the order of my inequality because I changed this number over here to a negative. And now I'm going to solve each of them. Okay, subtract 2, subtract 2. At the same time, I'll do that over to this one. All right, negative 4q is going to be greater than or equal to 8. And over here, I'm going to have negative 4q is going to be less than or equal to negative 12. All right. In both cases, to get the Q by itself, I would have to divide both sides by negative 4. On the left, Q 
and again I divided by wrote that wrong I divided by a negative so I have to change the direction of my sign and I'm getting negative 2 okay over here I changed or excuse me I divided by a negative 4 so I have to change the order of my sign again or my inequality sign and I will get 3 and all along this is an or inequality okay so I have Q is less than or equal to negative 2 okay so less than or equal to negative 2 I'm gonna put in a solid circle there because of the equal to aspect of it and then I have greater than or equal to 3 alright now again the inequality signs will take you to the correct shading over here less than or equal to means I have to shade this way over here greater than or equal to means I have to shade this way alright this is more typical of what a disjunction will look like the gap in the middle of your number line and again in order to work or to be a solution it only has to fulfill one part of the inequality alright if my solution is less than or equal to negative 2 it works if it's greater than or equal to 3 it works it does not have to work for both in this case alright this um, we're going to kind of take a look at things from the other end here. Uh, first thing you should notice is the absolute value is not isolated. Okay, We have to get it completely by itself before we can do anything else. So I'm going to have to multiply both sides of this by 3. All right, So that's going to leave me with the absolute value of 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to 3. Okay, Now, absolute value is by itself. So now I want to look at my sign. Okay, my inequality sign is less than. Okay, so I'm going to make this an and inequality or a conjunction. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite it two separate ways. One is basically exactly how it is written up here, just without the absolute value signs. And because it's a conjunction, I go 2x plus 7 is greater than or equal to 3, negative 3. Okay, again change the direction of the sign because we change the sign of the number on that side okay now we just go about doing the exact same thing we did before we solve each inequality separately so I'm gonna start kinda of doing these at the same time subtract 7 from both sides so 2x is gonna be less than or equal to negative 4 and 2x is gonna be greater than or equal to negative 10 all right, to solve for x in both cases, I have to divide both sides by 2. Remember, perform the opposite to get where you want to go. All right, so in this case, on the left, x is going to be less than or equal to negative 2. Again, I didn't have to change the direction of my sign because I was not dividing or multiplying by a negative. On the left over here, x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 5. All right, and again, we started as a conjunction it will end as a conjunction or have an and between them so I'm going to go ahead and look at I have negative 2 less than or equal to negative 2 and I have negative 5 All right, so I'm going to put that here greater than or equal to negative 5 so I put closed circles on both because both have that equal to aspect with them alright and then again the signs will pretty much tell you where to go less than or equal to negative 2 means I have to go this way. Greater than or equal to negative 5 means I have to go this way. Now again, I don't extend the lines beyond the other point that is there because the whole idea of a conjunction is it has to work for both of them. So in this case, the only way to be a solution to this particular um, inequality is my answer has to be between negative 5 and negative 2. All right, so that did get a little bit long. Um, hopefully that kind of sums up where we're looking at this kind of stuff. Hopefully you took some notes as you went through and uh, looked at this a little bit so you have something to refer back to. Um, the assignment is in the same place that it always is. Um, again, the additional notes and additional examples are available for your use if you're having some trouble with uh, the concepts that were presented in the video.